Hey everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, February 23rd, and from a potential new roller coaster coming to Cedar Point to a quick update on what's happening with the next stimulus package, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, things are finally starting to warm up. So let's take a look at what's ahead with our first alert weather team. We've got temperatures in the 40s today. Tomorrow it's going to be breezy once again, and that's what, especially when you get out on waterways, rivers, or Lake Erie, where that ice can flow and move. That's exactly what it's going to do over the next couple days with temperatures above freezing. 36 degrees, that's still warm Thursday, and 40 degrees, another bright day on Friday. So this is very much a melting weather pattern that's going on out there. All right, so let's look at our hour by hour outlook the rest of today. Southerly winds, mild sunshine. That's going to be a little bit on the breezy side as well. Uh, tonight, clouds will move back into the picture. It's possible we get a little uh, flash fog that develops after sundown tonight just because of all of the moisture being released into the atmosphere from the melting snow. Tomorrow morning, more clouds. Still going to be relatively mild though, and it's not out of the question. You could get a light sprinkle tomorrow, but overall, I think it's just going to be a cloudy mild sort of day and a little bit on the breezy side as well. There again, the next few days watching a system over the weekend that could bring us a chance for some rain showers Saturday and Sunday. And we here at WTL 11 are teaming up with Mommy Valley Movers to send hope to Texas in the wake of the devastating winter weather that they got last week. On Monday, March 1st, we'll be collecting the following items at our studio at 730 North Summit Street in downtown Toledo. So we'll be taking cases of water, non-perishable food, but no glass jars, please, and personal care and hygiene items for adults and children. The donation drive is from 6 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. and it will be contact free. So please put your items in the trunk of your car and volunteers at the station will take them out of your trunk and load them onto the Mommy Valley Movers truck. If you'd rather donate cash, you can do that through the American Red Cross. We will not be accepting cash or checks on site. So just go to redcross.org, call 800 Red Cross, or you can text the word Red Cross, all one word, to 90999 and make a $10 donation. When everything is said and done, Mommy Valley Movers will drive their truck full of your donations to Dallas to distribute them to people in need. Any donations that exceed what the truck can hold will be donated to care organizations locally. And could there be a new roller coaster coming to Cedar Point? All signs point to probably yes. I mean, just take a look at this one. It says top secret, new roller coaster 2022, authorized personnel only. These hints first popped up this Saturday as guests wander the park for its winter chill out charity event. But that wasn't the only sign. This one was also found in the park Saturday, showing a rough drawing of a coaster track between the Maverick and the Mine Ride with an estimated footer install date of March 1st, 2021. So what does this all mean? Is any of it true or is Cedar Point just trolling us? Well, our sister station in Cleveland, WKYC, talked to Cedar Point's Tony Clark, who said, quote, Winter chill out is a great time for us to share new information and have a little bit of fun while we're at it. Sounds promising, right? But then he goes on to say, well, anything they saw come to fruition? Maybe, maybe not. So cool, but here's what we can guess. A coaster at 526 feet tall? Well, that's likely not the case for 2022. It's probably just the park officials messing with us a bit as some fans frequently discuss their desire for a Cedar Point coaster that tops 500 feet. And footers installed by March 1st? Well, that could happen, but we won't know that until guests can return on opening day, which is May 14th. But if there are any more hints or teases or whatever, we will be sure to let you know. And the union that represents journalists who work at The Blade, the Toledo News Guild, has filed an unfair labor practice against the paper and its parent company, Block Communications, after they say the paper has refused to bargain safely during the pandemic. The Guild released a statement about the lawsuit saying that throughout the pandemic, the paper's management and an attorney representing the Blade have insisted that negotiations occur in person and indoors. The Guild says that proposed alternatives like meeting outdoors were turned down while an attorney has refused to wear a mask during negotiations. And they say attempts to bring in federal mediator were also effectively shut down by Block Communications and its attorney because federal mediators are prohibited from meeting in person during the pandemic. The Guild statement read, in part, 
This has been part of their campaign to burst our union, impose their will and terms upon us, and beat back dissent over unethical practices at the newspaper and block interference with the editorial independence of Blade journalists. Now, this lawsuit comes weeks after Blade journalists held a byline strike following what workers called censorship of their reporting on the January 6th U.S. Capitol breach. Now, we have reached out to Block Communications to hear their side of the story, but as of this recording, we haven't heard back from them yet. But you can continue to check back on this story on our website. I have a link in the description of this video. One of Hollywood's most famous faces is preparing to tackle the decade-long abuse scandal at The Ohio State University. According to The Hollywood Reporter, George Clooney will produce a docuseries based on an October 2020 Sports Illustrated story by John Wertheim, who detailed allegations of sexual abuse within the university's athletic department committed by sports doctor Richard Strauss. Last year, Ohio State finalized a $40.9 million settlement with 162 survivors related to the sexual abuse allegations against Strauss. A university investigation found that Strauss abused students during his time working at OSU from 1978 through 1998, and that the university administration failed to appropriately respond. Even after being released from his position in the athletic department, Strauss remained a tenured professor at Ohio State. He died by suicide in 2005. A Cleveland attorney who represents two of Strauss's accusers says he hopes the docuseries helps to unlock stigma surrounding male victims at the hands of male perpetrators. But currently, the docuseries does not have an outlet for distribution, so we will keep you updated on that. And finally, there's been some more motion on the next stimulus package. Yesterday, the House Budget Committee advanced the 591-page package, which means it's now headed for a full House vote, and it could be passed by the chamber by the end of the week. Democrats' thin 10-vote House majority leaves them very little wiggle room in the face of Republican opposition, and they have none in a 50-50 Senate they control only with Vice President Kamala Harris's tie-breaking vote. Tucked into Biden's stimulus package is a raise in the minimum wage to $15 over five years, which has caused some internal disputes among Democrats. And in addition to that, Dems can't agree on how much aid to send to struggling state governments and whether or not to extend emergency unemployment benefits another month. But it's very unlikely the party will vote against the president, especially so early on in his term. In a nutshell, the current bill would provide $1,400 payments to millions of low- and middle-income people, increase child tax credits, and offer extra $400 weekly federal unemployment benefits through August. It would provide hundreds of billions of dollars for state and local governments, shuttered schools, COVID-19 vaccines and testing, and struggling airlines, among other businesses. For more information on the status of the next stimulus package, check out the link in the description of this video. But before I go, how about a little bit of food news? All of these fast food places are in the fight to reign supreme for the best chicken sandwich. Taco Bell has even gotten in on the action with the spicy chicken taco sandwich. I don't know, but honestly, it doesn't look half bad. It will be released on March 11th in Nashville, Tennessee and in Charlotte, North Carolina to start, and then it will be rolled out nationally sometime later this year. But right now, Toledoans, McDonald's has our backs. Celebrate the launch of its new crispy chicken sandwich, McDonald's across the Toledo area gave diners a chance to try the sandwiches for free today. The first 100 vehicles and area drive throughs received a crispy chicken sandwich with no other purchase necessary, not even off the dollar menu. So we know who's fighting for our affection here in the 419, right? But did any of you get your spot in line? Let me know if the sandwich was any good. Let me know in the comments below. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you're in the loop.